In this video, we are going to discuss microphones. Now, I'm not sure where you are. If you are starting your content creation journey, maybe you're, you've been doing it for a while, but you want to better your audio. Maybe you want to start or continue a podcast. My goal with this video is to break down several different microphones just so you can understand the profiles for each mic um, and to see which may work best for your particular use case. I've been in photography and AV now for a little over 20 years, and I can tell you that when it comes to video, audio is essential to making everything really look and sound its best. And I know that sounds crazy because we talk about video as well, but it's very hard to watch a video if the audio is bad. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get into these different types of microphones um, so you can hear for yourself how they sound. And I want you guys to understand this as we talk about the microphones, you need to understand that everybody has an individual voice profile. And um, when it comes to these particular microphones or not these particular microphones, but when it comes to microphones in general, profiles sound different on mics, especially when they're straight out of the box. And sometimes you need to EQ a mic to get it where you want. Sometimes you want to use it out of the box. So just understand that these what we're about to do here is going to hopefully provide you with some type of baseline. Uh, but it's not the end all be all. You'll need to get into these mics and see what works best for you. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to discuss the onboard microphone. All right, guys. So the microphone that you're listening to now is the microphone that's on the camera. This is being shot with a Sony a6100, if you care to know that information. And as you can tell, the microphone or the sound that you're hearing from the microphone now sounds a lot different than the one that we started off with. And we're going to talk about that mic. Um, coming up here soon. Every video camera usually is going to have an, an onboard microphone. I will say this is probably the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to quality of sound. As you can hear, and I'm not even monitoring this, I just know how these work. As you can hear, it's, it's a lot more airy. I don't really sound as close. The audio isn't as rich as it was when I was using this other microphone. If this is what you want, if this is all you have, definitely use this. But I would say if you really want to take your content creation seriously, uh, you want to move from the onboard mic to another mic, a better mic, as soon as possible. So again, this sound you're hearing now is the onboard microphone. All right, everybody. So the sound that you're listening to now is a video mic. Now, this mic is a, one that fits onto cold shoe or flash shoe on your camera and you usually plug it right into the audio jack on your camera if it has that. Um, now, I will say, and I'll, I'll probably show some B-roll footage over here. I will say that this is what I will call a level two microphone, uh, meaning it's still part of the camera, even though it's not the internal microphone, it's a video mic. Uh, but as you can tell, the audio sound has gone up from the onboard microphone. So if you were to say, hey, I don't have a lot of money for a microphone, and we'll get into what some of those nuances look like with the different mics, what is the best microphone I could get that's just a step above maybe my onboard camera microphone, I would definitely suggest a uh, video microphone. There are different ones out there. The one that's on board here is a Rode video mic. I love these microphones. Most of the microphones I have, I'll tell you now, are with Rode. I do have some that are uh, from other manufacturers. But again, this is the onboard video mic. So this next microphone that we're looking at, let me turn it down a little bit. This next microphone that we're looking at is a lavalier mic. This is the type of microphone that is clipped to an article of clothing, usually some type of jacket, shirt, whatever. You see a lot of this for people that are speaking on stage. If you're doing video that was going to require you to move around a lot, a lot of people will prefer a lavalier setup. Now, there are different types of lavalier setups. You can have a wired lavalier setup to where it clips on, but then the cable goes directly to your video camera, maybe even computer. I'm not sure if they do it with a computer, but definitely with your video camera. I will say I like these microphones for the use cases would be mobility. If you need to move around a lot, it's not my favorite. If it's a situation where someone's going to be moving around or I'm going to be moving around a lot, it's my favorite microphone because as you can tell from the sound quality, it's better than the onboard mic. I would say it's better depending on the distance from the camera. I would say it's better than the video mic, but it still doesn't give me just off break. It doesn't give me that rich audio sound that I like. I will have to do some things in post-production to get this how, how I like it. Currently right now um, in this setup, I am in my basement and 
you know, if I don't have any sound treatment up and different things like that, you can kind of hear. And I'm not going to put any processing on this because I want you to hear it directly how it is, but you can hear how it kind of picks up the room. So again, just keep in mind, a lot of times, depending on your situation where you are, uh, you will need to treat your space or do some post-processing on your audio with the lavalier mic to get it in range of what you want it to be. Now, when it keep in mind as well, I didn't take a lot of time to clip this thing perfectly, but capsule placement um, on your clothing is essential with this. If you say, for instance, you put it here, but you're in a situation where your, your subject or yourself turns away from the microphone, you can hear if they're talking this way, you can hear that that changes, but as soon as they come back, you can hear the audio change in the microphone. So you just have to ver be very careful of where you place it um, so you don't have any inconsistencies in your recording. The system I'm using here is a Sony system. I mentioned earlier that you can get a lavalier system that either plugs directly into your source or to your camera, or you could get a unit like this. Now, keep in mind with a unit like this, we're using a Sony, there's so many types of Sennheiser, there's so many different types of wireless lavalier options that you have. You have a transmitter and then you have a receiver. And you're going to need to be able to take the receiver and plug it into some type of audio capture. I'm using a Zoom H8 here. I have links to all this stuff in the description. But you're going to need to be able to take this and record it into a separate recorder. And then you're going to have to, in post-production, sync your files together. It's not a bad option. Like I said, um, I, I use it a lot. This recorder here, the Zoom H8, is probably my favorite mobile recorder. Let's see if I can get it on camera here. This is my favorite mobile recorder. There's so many options here. I'll probably do another video about that. But again, this is a wireless lavalier microphone setup. It's great. Again, best use cases, I would say, if you need to be mobile, you can't be stationary. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to always go back to the best microphone for any type of talking head, I believe, is a dynamic microphone. But if you need to be mobile, definitely go, if you can, with a wireless option because it's going to give you more flexibility. This next option here, I would say um, you see a lot of people using these now more so than probably any other mic I'm talking about now. Just again, for people that want mobility, um, but they don't want to use a wireless lavalier. They don't want to they don't want the onboard camera situation. Uh, they don't want the onboard um, audio situation on the camera and they don't want a video mic. They will use a handheld mic like these. These mics are kind of staples in the audio industry. This is a uh, sure SM48, not the 58. The 58 is probably the most popular one for sure. Um, but this is a great microphone. I will kind of the pros with it. It has a dynamic sound that I like. Um, it has that richness in the audio. I will say the cons though is it picks up a lot of handling noise. Like if you, you can kind of hear that it translates into the microphone and you do depending on if it's just you or you're working with somebody else, they do have to understand how to hold the mic, um, not to eat the mic, meaning they have the mic too close to their mouth. It's it's proximity is very important when you are talking about a handheld situation with a microphone. This is an XLR mic, which means it has to go into some type of recording device. Again, I have it going into my Zoom H8. There are plenty of mics out there. I don't actually own one, but there there are plenty of mics that give you either a USB option to let you go right into your computer, or they actually give you like a USB option along with an XLR option. If I can find one, I will link it up in the description as well. I, I have it in mind, but I just don't have the mic here, but I'll make sure I include it in the description. But these are great microphones. If you have to take your show on the road, maybe if you have a pop-up interview with someone you want to talk to, or maybe, you know, you want a light profile or a small footprint rather, and you're recording a podcast. Um, I've done this before. It's very easy to throw your recorder, a short three foot XLR cable and um, a microphone in the bag. And then you can just record on the go. Um, and it's very easy to use. So I would say if you don't mind this, you can also put it on a stand too, uh, which is cool and, and have it on a table stop tabletop so you don't have to actually hold it i think that's great too this is a great option uh, no matter what mic you get i think this is a great option to just have as a secondary mic or just something you can quickly go through um, i didn't discuss pricing with the other microphones because pricing can kind of be all over the place especially now but these microphones are 
under a hundred bucks. I think I might have paid fifty dollars for this microphone. Might have been sixty. Um, I've had it for a couple years now, but it's a great mic. It's also really good if you're recording on a camera. You need to interview. You have somebody in front of your camera that you want to interview. You can just have the proper length of an XLR cable and you can give them the mic and they can do an interview. It's great for that. And you don't have to mic them up or anything like that. So this is again, the Shure SM48, great handheld microphone. Definitely recommend it even as a secondary mic uh, to keep in your kit. This next mic, um, it's a special mic, not just th this particular microphone, but this style of microphone. This is what you call a shotgun mic. And I'm gonna be honest with you, um, I don't have my rigging set up. This is a, sh a mic that's not even usually in the camera frame. It's it's kind of become popular now for people to um, have it in the camera frame, but it's a directional mic, which means it, um, if I come off the mic like this, you can hear the sound change. But if I come close here, it's the pattern is right here. It's a very rich sounding mic this particular one is an older mic it's the rode ntg2 um rode has several uh, versions of this microphone but this is great a lot of times shotgun mics in general when you're watching an interview on tv or youtube or whatever a lot of times they have the shotgun mics they'll have one on each person uh, angled angled down and usually you put it right out of frame and you'll have it aiming down so the pattern that the mic picks up, it usually comes down and hits right in their chest. And so when someone's talking, they're talking right across the direction of the mic and it picks them up. And you usually want to have it as close to the person as possible, just outside of the camera frame. Again, I don't have my whole setup here, so I can't um, really demonstrate the distance, but you guys can hear this mic sounds really good. The one issue I would say is it has it's very sensitive. If it, it like it's a sensitive mic, it any type of vibration, touch or whatever, it will pick it up. So it's great to have it kind of outside the frame of your shot. Price wise, I want to say when I got this mic, it was about two thirty. I'm not sure two hundred thirty dollars. I'm not sure what it goes for now. Use cases, I would say this is a great microphone if you have a studio setup where it's not changing. It's turnkey. You pretty much go into your situation, go into your office, your studio. You just turn everything on and you don't want and you're somebody that doesn't want a mic in your shot. As you get go on in your content creation and, and start really, really figuring out and dialing in what you like, you may be someone that doesn't want anything. You don't want a, a dynamic mic. You don't want a, a lavalier mic, anything in your shot. A, a shotgun is great because you can get it right out of frame and really pretty much get the same quality of sound that you would get with the dynamic mic. So again, this is a shotgun mic. It's usually not used like this. It's usually out of frame, but it's a, a great option if you just don't want mics to be shown in your shot. So again, this is a shotgun mic and this is how it sounds. So now we are back to my favorite type of microphone, which is a dynamic microphone. This particular mic is the Rode Procaster. It's a dynamic broadcast microphone. I will say again, Rode has several of these microphones. This isn't even, it's another one that I want, uh, but I just haven't gotten yet. I probably will maybe over the next year. But this is, out of all the microphones that I have, this one is my favorite. And it goes back to what I was telling you early in this video. One of the reasons it's my favorite is because I believe it really goes well with my, my particular voice profile. I want to, you know, I'm always sensitive when we're talking about gear and different things like that because everybody's in a different situation, but I'm, I'm share something with you guys. When it comes to making purchases, I believe, especially AV gear, I believe you should buy the best that you can buy at the time that you're making your purchase. I advise people not to settle. And here's why. These microphones that I have here, I've had them for about 10 years, right? And they still are amazing and the reason is because when i got them i got them because i didn't want to keep buying microphones right I, i've had them for a while um the shotgun mic that i showed you i've had that for about 10 years so when you're making your purchases always try to get the best that you can buy um, at that time because i think it'll just serve you well you'll be able to use these microphones in different uh, use cases and again, it's going to depend. You might be someone that wants different types of microphones depending on 
situation that you're in and that's fine uh the procaster is a great mic um you can see i have it on a, a arm here just because again it is sensitive to you know touch and vibrations and everything so i do have it on a shock mounted arm um you may not want that you may want it on a um a desk stand it's totally up to you uh, but i just prefer this way because if i'm doing something writing or typing or something my hands can move underneath of it and i don't have to really worry about that um, also, I will show you here. I do. This is what the mic looks like um, bare. The reason I have this on here, this is a pop filter. I always keep this on because it, it helps with the plosives. Um, something else that you really don't want to edit out in post production if you don't have to. And this is the Rode Procaster. It is a dynamic broadcast microphone. Out of every microphone that I have, it's absolutely my favorite. I think you guys can probably tell why. So we're going to move on to our last and final microphone. Uh, which is actually the Rode Pod mic. This is the Rode Pod mic. I'm sure you can kind of see it has a smaller uh, profile. It looks like the baby brother or the baby sister, however you want to say it, to the uh, Procaster, but it is a smaller microphone. When I bought the Procaster, I think it was like 229 The one thing that people really love about this microphone here is that it has... A very similar profile to the Procaster, so it's going to give you that rich audio, but it's under a hundred bucks, right? So I think if you're in a situation, especially if you're trying to do a podcast setup or something like that, you're trying to watch your coins, I would say you can get a couple of these for the price of one of those, right? And I think you'll be you'll be totally fine. Again, you're going to have to get these microphones and, and understand exactly how the profiles work for you and what sounds best. Now, again, this is a microphone that should be at at least on a desktop stand. You're not supposed to hold it like this, but again, I don't have everything here for this review, but you can have it on the same type of arm as this. And it, there's one good thing, and this is something new that they came out with, I wanna say last year in 2023, is that they now have Rode introduce the PodMic USB. Now, why that's important is because it looks like this. I think it's all black. Um, it's still going to give you the XLR option, but it's also going to give you the option to plug this microphone directly into your computer. And I want to say you can even plug it into your phone so you can almost record with your phone with this and, and get this type of sound. Again, I will have that linked up in the description below as well. So, guys, it, it's a lot of different options here. It's a lot of different things to think about. But as we finish up, I want to go back to my favorite mic, the Procaster, so we can finish up. But this one right here is the Rode Pod mic. There are a lot. There are tons of mics out on the market but they kind of created a category with this mic so you know do your research figure out what works best for you but this is an amazing microphone especially if you're just getting started you want the dynamic broadcast sound but you you know you're, you're watching watching your money you want to get the best you can get i definitely recommend uh the pod mic so that is it for the microphones uh we went through was it two four six seven mics i believe went through several microphones like i said it's one microphone does not fit all you have uh different budgets that you're working with you have different sound profiles that you're working with it's just best to kind of find what works for you i will say this and, and just so you guys know xlr is probably the best any mic that's an xlr is probably going to have the best sound per se i know i may get some feedback for that in the comments but i will say that's more of your professional quality sound at a different price ranges for it doesn't mean that it's just always really expensive but uh, one thing to consider again with the xlr is you're going to have to plug it into something and i'm using my zoom h8 recorder uh, and I, I will tell you right now the one reason that i like this recorder is i can plug in six xlr mics uh to this and record all six different channels um, stereo mixes everything so it's a great recorder um, i'll do a review on different types of recorders here soon so you guys can see for yourself but again i hope you like this mic review i hope it's not too long once i put all this together but i wanted to be as thorough as possible i get a lot of questions about what type of mic should i use and again you got price points you got audio quality you got sound profiles, different things to think about. If if you're not someone that wants to get in and do the post production and and fix things and stuff like that, definitely get a, a. I would say suggest that you get a mic for you that sounds how you want it to sound, almost out of the box. Don't buy anything that you're going to have to do a lot of adjustments to or create sound profiles for. Just try to find a mic 
uh, that's best for you. If you guys have any questions, definitely send me a message, leave me a comment, and I will get back to you soon. Again, thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.